The battle for Alberta officially starts today with a 28-day election campaign featuring two women who both want to return to the top job. Together, there is nothing we can't accomplish. That's what it means to be Albertan. Alberta, I work for you. And if I earn your support to be Premier, I will never stop working for you. Rachel Notley, of course, familiar face. She became Premier in 2015, riding a surprising NDP wave, becoming only the second woman in Alberta's history to lead the province. Danielle Smith is the third woman ever to serve in that role. She is the Premier and also wants that job back. But there are a few other things that make this race exceptional. One, Premier Smith has already been under the microscope nationally and for all the wrong reasons. Alberta's new Premier, Danielle Smith, is starting her term on the back foot, apologizing for statements she made on day one of the job. Over the course of an 11-minute phone call recorded in January, Premier Danielle Smith sympathized with Pastor Arthur Pulowski. Danielle Smith's signature policy pitched as a way for Alberta to stand up to Ottawa to reject federal laws it disagrees with. If Danielle Smith is going to keep her job, she will have to convince voters she's capable of doing it. But also, this race is insanely close. The polls across the province have been pretty steady for the last few months, and they show a tie, a neck and neck race between the United Conservatives and the New Democrats. Polls have both parties basically in a coin flip position, and that's very unusual for a province that has leaned clearly conservative for almost as long as it has existed. For a lot of the people who are voting for the New Democrats, it's because they don't like Daniel Smith. And for a lot of the people who are voting for the United Conservatives, it's because they don't like Rachel Notley. So this election is very tight, but it's also really polarized which means there's not that many people up for grabs in this election. But one more reason this election is worth watching, even if you're not from Alberta. Whoever wins will have the agency to fundamentally reshape the province's relationship with Ottawa and with the rest of Canada. Yeah, this is an important election not just for Albertans but for all Canadians because Alberta plays such a key role in Confederation not just because it is an economic powerhouse within the country but it is also one of the provinces that often goes to war with the federal government and can sometimes bicker with other provinces that receive equalization payments. So let's dive into this. Your primer on the Alberta election. The campaign starts now and here are the three things that will decide how it ends. Hey, we're touching base with the, the CBC's Jason Markasoff. You're in Calgary. How you doing, man? Good, man. How you doing, Andrew? Good, good, good. Okay, so, so three things to watch for and and leadership is kind of the first thing that I wanted to start with because can you can you explain for me how these two leaders Notley and Smith are kind of like perceived generally so Al Danielle Smith is a familiar figure to Albertans she led the Wild Rose Party in 2012 she wound up crossing the floor into the governing PCs in 2015 that became a shambles which got the NDP elected in the first place in uh, 2015 with Rachel Notley as premier but then we have Danielle Smith also making this big comeback she has been on the radio she's been a sort of a champion of the uh, COVID freedom movement against vaccines, skeptical, trying to fight Ottawa. So she's bringing this new face to the party, but with a lot of controversy uh, to her as well. Right. So from Danielle Smith's side, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel like she's gotten more bad press lately than good press. In a series of interviews and media appearances since mid-December, Alberta's Premier said she spoke to prosecutors about whether criminal cases related to COVID restrictions should proceed comments that set off a firestorm of criticism. Alberta Premier Danielle Smith's comments characterizing the relationship with Indigenous people and settlers as united continues to draw backlash. And Alberta Premier Danielle Smith says she is under investigation by the Provincial Ethics Commissioner into whether or not she interfered with the administration of justice in relation to a COVID-19 prosecution. She was very involved in the uh, freedom movement, kind of in the COVID, skept COVID rule skepticism uh, movement. Uh, and she brought this into her becoming Premier last fall when she declared that the unvaccinated are the most discriminated people that she's seen in her lifetime. The community that faced the most restrictions on their freedoms in the last year were those who made a choice not to be vaccinated. So they have been the most discriminated against group that I've ever witnessed in my lifetime. 
she's had to walk that back. She's had to walk back a number of other uh, other things that she's done. Um, we're even hearing her lately uh, having to walk back or m brush aside some of the things she said just two years ago about pro about health care. A regular checkup to your doctor. Does that really have to be something that is covered 100% by government or should that be paid for out of your health spending account? That maybe it's better idea to have people pay for their doctors or have some stake in paying for their doctor, um, which is not something you want to present in a general election where public health care is a big deal. Um, that's the sort of things that she's having to walk away. What about um, Rachel Notley? I mean, you know, she won the premiership in 2015, but then voters decided they, they weren't interested anymore. So, so what baggage do you think she's carrying with her? Yeah, it was a bit of a surprise when she first got elected. That was really a, a vote against uh, the 44-year PC dynasty. So she didn't come in with a lot of support in general. People liked her. Um, she's popular. Um, but she was premier during a very difficult time for Alberta's economy. Due to circumstances well beyond our control, our economy um, is volatile one and and we may be struggling a bit companies are cutting back on hiring and investment and the plummeting price of oil means the government's energy royalties are tumbling too by all indications uh, alberta is facing the prospect of a recession this year uh, oil prices were in the tank uh, jobs were being cut left right and center um, oil patch uh, the oil production uh, was going down in a big way um, so she she wears that and she wears not handling that well and the ucp will try to remind people People that her years were years of job cuts, of no investment in the economy, of people, more people leaving Alberta than coming in, which is not the traditional way of the Boomtown Oil Province. Uh, we have so she has to uh, wear that and pivot away from that and kind of say that those times weren't maybe as bad as people think. Second thing that could dictate the outcome of this election: the issues. And, and you mentioned health care. I mean, that is one of the top issues, bar none, in this particular election. Uh, Daniel Smith is trying her level best to uh, become a good face of public health care, but that's clearly NDP territory. Uh, people trust the NDP far more on things like social services, education, health care, and health care has been very strained, like it is across the country. Um, you know, uh, they can't staff uh, maternity wards or certain uh, hospitals where emergencies, emergency sections shut down, um, huge backlogs in the hospitals. And and Rachel Notley is, uh, you know, saying we're not going to do what the UCP has been doing. We're going to improve things. Danielle Smith is trying her level best. She's not running away from that as an issue. Uh, she's, she has been uh, putting more money into it, making record investments in healthcare, trying to improve ambulance wait times, hot, um, surgery wait times. Um, but the level of trust is more there on the. Uh, the NDP side. They had uh, fired, uh, threatened to fire thousands of nurses, ripped up the doctor's agreement, and presented a report that was uh, planning to delist a whole range of services. So when the UCP shows you who they are, you should watch, you should listen. But as far as top issues go, I mean, there's health care. Not far behind, you'll have inflation, economy. And you've got to figure, especially given what you've said about Notley's tenure as premier, that's got to be advantage Smith? Probably. Um, affordability may be a bit of a wash because the, the inflation and pressures are on the uh, UCP government's watch. But the other thing she has going for her on the economy side, Danielle Smith, is that the economy is strong right now. We're not in recession right now. Oil prices are healthy. Um, jobs are coming in. People are coming in, in the oil patch and elsewhere. So, you know, she has that ability to say that if you guys don't elect me, if you bring back the NDP, those bad old days will come. She wants you to forget how her NDP drove us into massive debt and lost 183,000 jobs. Rachel Notley and the NDP, can we really afford them again? The NDP is trying to shore up their weaknesses on this. They're talking about economic diversification. They're talking about revitalizing the vacancy, vacant uh, buildings. But they brought in a former major bank economist, Todd Hirsch, as their sort of spokesperson on this, giving them their fiscal blueprint, giving them their sort of economic shield so that they don't uh, be seen as too weak on that issue. Okay, uh, Jason, third thing that will absolutely dictate the outcome of this forthcoming election, and that's Calgary. C can you explain for me why is it that the path to victory here goes straight through that city? I mean, it's not just that Calgary is the biggest city in, uh, in Alberta and one with the most seats, 26 of 87 seats. It's that it's kind of in the middle of Alberta politically. On, uh, on the NDP side, the stronghold is Edmonton, the city of Edmonton, the capital, um, and almost all of its seats are controlled by the, the NDP. 
And then there's the rest, the smaller towns, rural Alberta, smaller cities that are almost all UCP right now. Um, and nobody thinks that there's gonna be a whole lot of change on either side. And then in the middle of that, is the city of Calgary, which is you know urban but also very corporate, traditionally conservative, but has become increasingly mo uh, moderate. They've elected mayors like Nahid Nenshi, uh, now Jody Gondek, uh, not the conservative choice. Um, so both campaigns are headquartering themselves here, and they're really gunning hard to win and push hard and appeal to Calgary. And what that means is appealing as moderates. Um, appealing as centrist people who are going to, you know, they're both almost trying to be the, come the same person, Danielle Smith and Rachel Notley. Both are now coming out and saying, I'm going to be reliable on the economy, support public health care, be strong on a lot of issues, invest heavily in Calgary. In fact, Danielle Smith just promised $333 million for, to help build a new or uh, Calgary Flames Arena for our hockey team, uh, which no other Premier, uh, NDP, Conservative or otherwise, has even promised. Calgary will be home to one of the greatest arena and event centres in all of North America. Um, so they're all trying to appeal, saying we're going to build Calgary, we're going to be great for Calgary. Uh, you're gonna, every uh, every answer uh, you're going to hear on the election from here till May 29 is going to be Calgary, Calgary, Calgary. But, but correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, Danielle Smith's UCP crushed it last election, right? Just, just absolutely dominated Calgary. They, they crushed it last time, but there, but that was when they were 20 some points ahead in the polls. Right now, the polls are about even, so it's going to come down to how they market themselves in uh, in Calgary. Uh, the NDP is uh, going big on their leader. They feel their leader is their strongest asset. So uh, here's one of their brochures. Uh, not, Rachel Notley is front and center. ECP candidates uh, signed. Uh, Pat Flitt isn't going to have anything about Danielle Smith on her. Her controversies are pretty great and. Uh, it, her popularity in, Al, in, in Calgary especially is pretty low. People, even conservatives, see her as more right-wing than they are. So they're presenting a very moderate uh, scale. And keeping that in mind, uh, what else is the NDP marketing on their, uh, on their ads? Danielle Smith, that she's too risky, too unpredictable. Interesting. Hey, Jason Markusoff, I hope we can chat again uh, during the campaign. This was fun.